Good morning and welcome to Cape Hatteras National Seashore. This morning we are going to actually take a look at a sea turtle nest excavation with one of our wildlife biologists. So just showing you a shot of where we're at along the seashore. And here's our wildlife biologist getting ready. Good morning. So can you say what we're doing here? Sure, so what we have for you today is a, a loggerhead sea turtle nest excavation. And so what happens is we wait for uh, basically 50 to 55 days for these nests to hatch. And once they do hatch, we do a nest inventory just to kind of see what the success rate was, how many eggs hatched, how many didn't hatch. So loggerheads are the most common sea turtle that we see nesting at Cape Hatteras. And this year we're looking at a record year. We're up to 285 nests and that beats the previous record of 254. So a really good year for us. And one side note about this current location, it's, it's actually really interesting. We've had seven nests right here within about 200 yards of each other, which is pretty unique. Sea turtles tend to spread out pretty well across the seashore, but this year they all just kind of congregated in one spot. So pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so this nest uh, boiled three days ago, and by boil I mean it's a lot of hatchlings came out at one time, which is what we want to see, so that's good. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and take a look and see if there are any hatchlings left inside or if they all made it out. Okay. Okay. So we're just going to start digging right into the sand. Yep. And what you see here is a filter fence that we use just to kind of help guide the hatchlings down to the ocean. And what it really does is it acts as a barrier for light because the brightest things those hatchlings should see when they emerge is the ocean. And sometimes you don't get that uh, with all the village lights in the background. And sometimes you get cases of where they head straight for the village. And that's what we don't want to see. So, so this filter fence kind of helps them along. And uh, the nest is in a pretty high spot, so they have a pretty good view of the oceans. So let's see what we have. Okay. And if any of you have questions, well, Paul is digging, feel free to type them in. And yes, we do have a, um, a hotline that you can call to find out when we have public excavations, which I believe we actually have one going on this morning at Coquina Beach. Um, and Paul, do you remember that number off the top of your head? The nest number? Yes. The nest number is NBI 04. And yeah, about uh, 8.45, there'll be an interpretive program starting there at the nest, and 9 a.m., the actual excavation will take place. And yes, this morning we just have our one wildlife biologist doing the excavation here. Uh, and about how many hatchlings are in each nest? Um, well, we have a, in this particular nest, there's a, quite a few came out, so it's really hard to say how many hatchlings are in there. Uh, oops. As far as, uh, as far as egg numbers go, though, I mean, they vary quite a bit from 85 to 140 eggs per nest, so we'll see, uh, we'll see how many are in here. We don't really know how many eggs are in here because it wasn't relocated. This, this nest was left in place where the female laid it, so we'll get an overall nest count at the end, too, or egg count, rather. Okay. And I did see one little hatchling in here, so looks like we have one so far that did not make it out. Okay, you can see it moving down in there. Just kind of help them out. Okay. So sometimes what happens is you'll get you'll get some compaction down into the nest, and that could be from probably rain is the most likely cause. And some of the the single hatchlings don't really make it out on their own when they're kind of stuck at the bottom. So yeah, this is your typical loggerhead hatchling, and we'll go ahead and put it in our bucket here. And any hatchlings that we collect today, they'll actually be released in the evening time. Tonight. <laughs> Happy birthday. Exactly. Okay, we've got some eggshells here. We'll start a little eggshell pile. Okay. 
you know, sometimes you'll even get whole eggs that don't hatch at all for whatever reason. Either they didn't uh, develop whatsoever or they aborted at some point in the development process. So at the end, we'll take a look at those eggs too and see if they attained any stage of development. How does the process of laying eggs happen only once per year? Or does the process of laying eggs happen only once per year? Uh, it does not. It happens multiple times. So every female will come up three to four times in any given year to lay a nest. So this female, this is her one nest, and so she probably came up two or three more times somewhere along the seashore. And a really cool thing that kind of helps us find out where she laid those nests is uh, from every nest we take one egg for a DNA sample when the nest is initially laid. And our state biologist uh, goes through all those samples at the end of the season and can actually tell us exactly how many nests that particular female laid and where she laid them along the seashore. So pretty cool project. They've been doing it for a few years now. So. Here are the, all the eggs that have hatched. Yes, they only take one egg per nest for that sample. Question, will MPS work with the nest up in Karova? Uh, the nests up in Karova are managed by the Network for Endangered Sea Turtles, or NEST. So they're, uh, it's basically a group of volunteers, and um, they've been really great at the, for the past few years of just basically patrolling the beaches and getting any nests from basically where the park jurisdiction ends all the way up to Virginia. So our park, uh, starts at uh, South Nag's Head at Ramp 1 particularly, and uh, everything north of there is managed by nest. Yep. It looks like we have another little hatchling in here. Let's see it moving. It didn't quite make it out. Okay. Yep. Good. So a couple loggerheads. There's a whole bunch that have hatched. Okay, and another one here. So I just want to show you a couple little differences here that we can see and kind of determine uh, that the, a couple hatchlings hatched not exactly at the same time. So. So if you take a look at these two hatchlings, you can see one is really flat. This one in my right hand is really flattened out, and this one in my left hand still has a little bit of a curved carapace or shell. So that pretty much tells me that this one probably hatched out earlier than this one because this one is still in the process of flattening out. So this guy probably will not be released tonight. When we may give it another day or so until he completely flattens out and is probably in his perfect swimming condition. So just a little side note there. One question was, why do we release them at night? Uh, we release them at night just to try to keep it uh, as natural as possible, I guess. It, uh, they hatch out at night, there's less predators around. Uh, the gulls aren't really a factor at night, too, so that helps a lot. Yep. And sometimes you'll see these little egglets in here. And uh, not really sure why they come out of the mom or uh, what they really serve, but uh, yeah. It's kind of interesting. So not quite a fully developed egg. Yeah, exactly. We see that sometimes. Okay, here's another hatchling. 
you see this one is kind of in the process of getting out of the shell and this one is even more curled as you can see kind of a little hunchback so <laughs> so he'll flatten out in a day or two Looks like we're nearing the end of this nest. So how long does it take for the babies to reach adulthood? Uh, the figure is about somewhere between 20 to 25 years old for loggerheads, so quite a long time. Yeah. And what day is this for the nest? Uh, let's see, so this nest hatched out in day 50, so this is about day 53 or 54, plus or minus one day. Yeah, I'd have to go back and look at my notes. Yep. We have another little egglet here, you can see. No, there isn't a tiny little sea turtle in there. They're just... <laughs> <laughs> just a... Yeah. All right, and that's it. So just by looking at what we have so far, without doing any counts, this nest uh, has actually done really well. We've got a lot of hatched egg shells and only three that did not hatch. So this is definitely an upper 90th percentile hatch success nest is what exactly what we want to see. And only three hatchlings didn't make it out, which is which is also good, you know. It's it's typical to find one or two or a few in there and what we don't want to see is like over a dozen or two dozen hatchlings in there. That's a pretty low emergence rate. So yeah, good overall. So we'll go ahead and do a little eggshell count here now. Right now, we're just counting all the eggs that hatched from the sea turtle nest. Happy to bring this live to you out in the Midwest. Okay, so we have 113 eggshells here. Wow, so 113 loggerheads already made it to the ocean. Well, from this minus the three in the bucket. Oh yes, and minus <laughs> the uh, ones in the bucket, which will be released tonight or in the next few days. one here that's looks like it's a dead hatchling inside that just probably aborted at some point so check these whole legs here and see if there's any development whatsoever. Okay. So as you can see this one is just a straight up yolk with albumin so no development whatsoever in this egg. So it wasn't fertilized at all? Yeah, I mean it's hard to say. 
what happens. The rest are fertilized, so how could that one egg not be not fertilized be is a good question. So I don't know. Not really sure. And same with this one. We have zero development here. Same with this one, so three undeveloped eggs. Okay. All right, and that's yeah. really it for the excavation, and I have, uh, I have just one more thing to kind of show you that we call insurance. <laughs> Let me dig up a... Uh... So we have these nifty little balls, and we call them transponder balls. And every nest in Cape Hatteras gets one of these balls placed in front of the nest. And what these serve as is, uh, let's say you have a big storm that comes in and kind of wipes everything out. And you have no more signs or your filter fence is gone and you have no way of finding the nest. So this is kind of like a little beacon that helps us find the nest in an event that we lose all our signage or markers that show where the nest is. So. We have a little locator that kind of picks up the signals emitted by these balls and we can find our nest that way. So yeah. And can you remind us what the the nest success rate was? Uh, so with this nest, yeah, so we have 113 that hatched and only three that didn't. So I mean, without doing the math, that's above 95%. So we're doing really good with this nest, for sure. Awesome. Yep. Well, thank you much. Yeah, Are no there problem. any other questions out there before we uh, conclude this session? If not, thank you all for tuning in. Thank and you. Have a wonderful day. Bye.